All right, so <clears throat> what you see in the vise is what we're going to be tying. It's called the balloon caddis. Uh, you can make your wing long or short. This one's a long wing. Uh, you can tie a short wing that comes basically right up just to the back of the fly right there. Uh, so, you know, do it either way. See what see which one works better for you. So, you can tie this also on a straight shank or a curved shank uh, hook. And so, I like the profile of the curved shank hook a little better. And so, what I have in the vise here, or I just put in the vise, is a Scud Emerger hook, a size 12 lightning strike. And the thread I'm going to be using is one of my go-tos, Unithread Black 80. So we're going to start this thread uh, about two, maybe just over two bodkin widths behind the eye, uh, not quite halfway. And where we start the Oh, we got something in my eye there. Sorry. Uh, where we start the thread is actually kind of keep this point in mind because that's where we're going to finish the fly. So I'm going to wrap back a little ways and take out that tag. And I'm just going to create a thread base with touching turns. Uh, and I take this down to uh, basically the barb or just past the barb somewhere right in there. The whole idea here is that this little curvature of the fly uh, sits right inside the water. So your wing is going to come off kind of like this. And then this back end just, just goes down inside the water to give it some profile in the water. Uh, next, what I want to do is I want to tie on my rib. And my rib is going to be just some fluorescent fire orange crystal flash. I'm going to tie this on on the bottom side. And I'm going to work it up. Whoop. And if it rolls around on you here, don't worry about it. It doesn't have to be super precise. Uh, this body's going to get dubbed. And we're going to take it right back to where we started. And I'm going to get that in my little clip and out of my way. Next what we need is the foam. Uh, so what I have here is just some yellow two millimeter craft foam. Um, you can get it at the fly shops. They'll come in like little square packages. Uh, oh, I don't know exactly what they are, but they're like three inches by four inches, something like that. Or you can go down to Hobby Lobby and pick up an entire sheet of this stuff for like 88 cents. Um, and it's, it's the same stuff. Um, so what we want first is the length. And uh, just for working purposes, I like to try to get, oh, roughly two inches. Uh, no, I'm sorry, two inches. <laughs> Twice the size of the length. Sorry, I was looking at my ruler. And I'll trim that out. Next, what I need is the width. And so for the width, what I like is to get my foam from the bottom side of the fly to the hook point. And so one way to do that is, just like I'm doing here, kind of pinch it on like so and just push into the hook point. And I'm going to pull that off. I don't know if you can see that or not probably can't see it but there'll be a little indentation in the foam right here and that's going to tell me where uh, I need to cut my foam to width oh sorry so uh, right like that and it doesn't have to be a perfect straight cut or anything like that just so you're roughly right on target that's pretty close uh, next, what I want to do is I want to take one side of the foam and I'm going to trim out the corners, sort of to a point, like so. Uh, now the distance here that I've trimmed out is about an eighth of an inch. And what I'll do when I line this up, uh, the back end of this is going to help create part of the taper for the body when we dub. 
but I want to line this up so that the straight parts where I've cut are roughly aligned with where my thread is or where I started it from. So I'll just pinch it on top. I'll put two loose wraps over and kind of situate it if you need to a little bit. Whoa, that one really moved on me. And then I'll just gently pull down so that it's basically right in the middle like so. Next, I'm going to use my left thumb, left index to kind of pinch and tack as I advance my thread towards the eye of the hook. And each time I do that, I'm tightening down on my thread as I advance it forward. You don't need a whole lot here. You just kind of want to keep it centered, kind of like that. Pretty close. Then what I like to do is I like to stop about a bodkin width or so behind the eye. And I like to put a little head in here. You don't have to do this. You can run your foam directly up top. There's actually a couple ways to do this. I'll go over them. But I like to stop right here and just kind of build a little head. Because where we started the fly, I think as I already mentioned, is where we're going to end it. So we're going to end it back here. And so I put my head in now. And really, I just like to have that little black dot as a part of the profile for the head. Uh, now, you can leave that part in, jump your thread to the back like so, and just continue to build the fly to the rear. Or uh, you can fold your thread forward and come up right behind the eye with a couple of loose turns. So if you can see that or not so that the hook eye is exposed when you pull it back. And it's really just the hook eye that's exposed when you do that. That's This is the way that I like to do it. But on the bottom side, you've got this already little black head that's there. Next, I'm just going to kind of loosely, uh, well, not loosely, but uh, roughly with tight turns, tie that foam in to the back and you can go back and forth a little bit just to kind of help create a little bit of a taper there. You don't have to get crazy with this. And I'm just gonna wind this on down to the back to where we tied in the rib, like so. Next what we need is dubbing. And for dubbing what I'm using here is the uh, SLF Dave Whitlock Sculpin Gold Brown. Uh, I really like this dubbing uh, for this pattern because it's already got some angel hair built into it. <clears throat> Plus, it's really not that bad to dub either. Uh, some of the SLF, SLF, there we go, stuff is a little difficult to dub. Uh, but this one's not so bad. And um, I think it really just kind of sets the fly off nicely. But uh, you use what you got and uh, it, it should work. It's a highly productive fly. So I'm going to get a couple turns in, twist it around, make sure it's on there, and I'm just going to start working this dubbing up. Twist, pinch, twist, pinch. Especially if you're using more of the synthetic stuff, twist and pinch is uh, kind of the way to go. Now, where we started the fly is where, this is why I told you to keep it in mind. So. Uh, you can't quite see it on the underside very well, but it's right about here. Oh, where that big black bulk thread part is. And I want to bring my dubbing up to there. And stop it. I want to pull the rest of this dubbing off. We're going to save that for uh, the last part of the fly. So that we're sitting about like this. So like I said, this fly is super easy to tie. Um, it really doesn't take long. Um, explaining it takes longer than it does to tie it for sure on this one. Not all the patterns are that way, but this one is. Next, I'm going to bring up my crystal flash. You could use wire here if you wanted. Uh, crystal flash is, you know, if a tooth gets caught on it, uh, you know, it's going to snap. But what I want to do here is 
I'm going to palmer this forward, or the rib forward, with evenly spaced turns. And I want about four or five in there. I'm just going to get up to my thread and catch that in. And then I'm going to take my crystal flash, I'm going to draw it to the back and put a few more wraps in right over the top. So what this does is this creates this little V wedge. We wrap this in going forward, we caught it in with our thread, we turn it around, wrap back over, and then that really locks it in place. Just like so. Next what we need is the wing. And uh, I'm using some deer hair. Uh, this one's pretty much picked through. I'm gonna cut the rest of this off, but <laughs> The way I uh, do it when I measure up my deer hair is I'll, I'll take a clump off the hide and uh, I probably should have got a new hide for the video, but, uh, and then I'll twist it together. So it's like that and I'll, I will set it to see if it sits between the bottom of the hook point and the bottom of the fly. And that's kind of how I gauge all my hair uh, wings. Uh, it always seems to work out to be about the right amount. If you're gonna air, on that, err on the side of heavy, not on the side of short. And the reason why is because once you've taken your clump uh, and you, you wanna pinch it by the tips here, and you start to gently pull, you're gonna start pulling stuff out, right? So you're gonna lose material here. So that's why I say err on the side of heavy. I'm gonna turn it around. You can rotate it to fan it out. Take your fingers, whip through it, Pluck it all out. Deer hair makes a mess, so be ready for that. Uh, and then I'll take my little dollar store, you know, comb and run it through there to get any additional under fur out. Rotate it around, pull it out, so on and so forth. Oop. So what we need here uh, to do next is to stack it. Now, if you don't have a hair stacker, you can hand stack it by simply grabbing the longest tips of the, uh, of the hair, separating them, realigning them, right? Oh, I'm doing this backwards and with the camera in my face, so that's not gonna work out well. But you can pull, stack, pull, stack, something along those lines until you've got it stacked up. You're gonna lose a lot of material, it's tough to do. So I'm just going to put this in the hair stacker. I lost a little bit more material there than I anticipated. <laughs> Such is life, though. And so I'm going to stack this guy. Now, I'm going to restack it because it didn't. I didn't pull it out correctly. Okay, so. If you want to line it up from your hair stacker, what you want to do is kind of hold it at a little bit of an angle and gently just pull out and then your tips should be uh, there hanging out. And you, now you can align your tips with where you want it to sit on the fly. If you want a longer wing, you can, you can kind of just move it around. Uh, traditionally, it sits just beyond uh, the butt of the fly and the bend of the hook. So it's kind of right in that in-between spot, like right about so. And now you can just take it, pinch it, pull it, and you're ready to do a couple of loose wraps. Just a couple of loose wraps just to hold on to it. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna gently pull down, gently. So you'll start to see the whole front part of this hair Splay out. So something about like that. It's actually just a little bit shorter than I normally do it. And we're gonna put a few more wraps in just to lock it down. Also, if you want your wing display, you can take your thumbnail and you can push it and twist like so until it flares open like that. And put a couple more turns in. We want the hair to be, uh, the wing, I should say. We want the wing to be sitting about even with the side flared up on both sides. So that's just 
just about right. I've got a couple that are anchored down just a little bit lower than I normally like, but that's kind of nitpicking it. So take your time. It may take you a few, few times to do this. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in. I'm going to grab, collect all that front stuff. Just grab it, collect it. I'm using, you can see I'm using my scissors to kind of push it to the back. I'm going to come in. I'm going to trim this out right on top like so. Now, if you're not super good with working with deer hair or if it really flays out on you a lot, uh, this is something you can do uh, to help with these smaller wings. Is you can get some super glue, come right on top, you know, place a little, little super glue right on top, do the uh, da, 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 you know, the Jeopardy theme song for about 15 seconds or so. Pinch the wings. Now, either way, pinch the wings, hold them up, and we're going to wrap through them. And you want to take your time here because we want to catch individual fibers as we roll through. I'm going to reverse one there. There we go. And as that glue is drying, again, you can kind of separate it, put it in place right as to where you want it. And as that glue sets, it's going to hold all of that in place. Now, if you're more comfortable using deer hair, you don't have to do that. Uh, well, you don't have to do it either way, really. But uh, so there you go. That's just a trick that you can use. We are way more than halfway home here. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to that same dubbing you could change the thorax color here if you wanted to and we're going to just dub some of this in let me get it on my thread and we're going to work to the back right to where that wing starts like so about like that and uh, we're going to fold this over. Now, when you fold this over, you shouldn't have crowded the eye, but if you did, you, if you got like a little bodkin with the hole in the back of it or whatever, you can I just move the whole darn fly. You can force it. You can kind of force it to the back if you need to, is my point. Or hold it in place so that it keeps that hook eye clear. Something like that. And I'm just going to hold that in place, or my foam in place, I should say. I'm going to bring just a loose wrap over. I haven't even gone all the way around yet. I want to make sure I've got this little bubble or balloon up front. And it's sitting evenly, so check your sides. That's kind of like where the balloon part comes from. And I'm going to bring my thread right between the abdomen and the thorax. I'm going to put... Oh, three wraps in, four wraps in. I'm just going to gently tighten down until this holds open. And you can whip finish. And that's, whoop, let me turn my vice back the other way. One, so I can do it. And two, you can see it. And I'll put about four or five turns in there. Now, if you don't like the look of the thread being on the bottom. It doesn't bother me so much. Uh, there's several things you can do here. One, you can take a bodkin or something and pick out your thread. Uh, and I do this anyway just so that it adds representation of legs so that when it turns back over now you've got your caddis legs. Uh, you could also go back to your dubbing and just put a little pinch on uh, but not onto your thread. Just kind of fold a little over, put it in place, do a wrap or two, situate it, and you can either glue finish this since we've already whip finished and glued. Uh, you could, or I'm sorry, we've whip finished. Now you could just take a your super glue, run it along your thread. Put a few 
turns in like so. Let me try to keep this on the bottom. If it goes over on top, it's not really like it's a big deal. This is meant to be a super easy fly. And uh, I'm just showing you some different techniques to achieve the goal of tying it. And so you could do something like that. And now your glue's kind of locked it in, into place and you've helped cover up the uh, bottom side thread wraps. <clears throat> um, so that's about it, except for trimming the foam to where you need it. Uh, now I've seen some people push it forward and line it up so that you trim it off with the front. Uh, you can do that uh, just to kind of keep it even. It gives you a good gauge. And uh, there's your there's your uh, foam back or your uh, foam wing. You can uh, come in and trim it shorter. If you wanted to, you could come in and put a little V wedge in with your scissors. Some people like that, kind of like the Amy's Ant or something like that. And then trim out the middle. Uh, that's an option. What I like to do is I like to trim mine just a little bit shorter, like so. And I like to cut off my corners, like that. And that's the way I think it looks the best. But So again, there's just a few options of different ways you can go about tying it. And uh, again, you know, you can tie it with a longer wing if you want a bigger presence on the water. Uh, you know, bigger bubble, bigger wing, longer legs, no legs. So a lot of options here. So I guess what I'm getting at is it's like, uh, this is one of those patterns that's kind of tough to screw up, right? <laughs> so, um, it's uh, it, it, it's really about preference on this one. Um, so anyway, uh, and if you're going to do the uh, extra dubbing underneath, use your fingernails, not your scissors, and just pull it away until you get the desired amount. So there's your legs. Anyhow, that's the balloon caddis. That's the way I tie it anyway. Uh, if you like the video, uh, I'd certainly appreciate it if you subscribe to my channel. Uh, give it a thumbs up. Click the notification bell for future videos. Uh, you can also uh, check us out over at Fly Tying for Beginners. Uh, it's a, uh, on Facebook. It's a Facebook group that, uh, that I run. Uh, it's really just dedicated to uh, fly tying um, and help beginners uh, and even sometimes more experienced people that just haven't you know, done this or that or the other. Uh, we try to cover as much as possible there. So I always view it that we're a beginner at something. I know I am. Um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you go over to Facebook and uh, join our group, just make sure you answer the questions. There's four questions. Answer those. That's your golden ticket in. And um, uh, you can join in on all the fun stuff we do over there. Uh, we have international fly swap that we do. Um, we do giveaways once in a while. Uh, we do. We have uh, fly tying classes. Uh, we do lives just to show you different techniques. Uh, you know. Um, so anyway, uh, again, I hope you enjoyed the video. Subscribe. Make sure you share the video too, and uh, we'll uh, we'll talk to you later. Take care, everybody. Happy tying.